What's going on, everybody? I'm John Welsh, and I'm the gentleman. And I'm Alex Stanford, and I'm the scholar, and this here is the lovely Farrah Reina. So what am I? You are the... The lady. The, 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 the lady. Lady. The lady of the day. Yeah. Right? Okay, deal. All right. We've yeah. never given our guest a title before. She's putting us on the spot. But, like, she, but she is a I lady. I just called me a bitch. No, I said, but she is. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't mean that. I would <laughs> never like, say that to a lady. <laughs> I'm the gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that. Didn't that I would sound never like do he was that? sort of going to... Like, he's, She's a bitch. She has lady. I was, I was but just really seeing where he was like, like, but she is oh, the, the lady. That's it. But, 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 but it sounded like, okay. Thank you for clarifying. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but I'm the gentleman. I would never. I, I've been called worse, so it's fine. Ooh, God. This is like hour two of the show, but we've just started. So welcome. But we do have a little bit of housekeeping before we get to the, the festivities, which we've been doing here. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell for notifications. Drop a comment. Like us. Best yet, share us. Why? Please. Because everybody wants a piece. <laughs> share us. Share us. <laughs> every time, every time in an episode when I dare them to leave a comment, they're always like, "You are right." I, I have <laughs> we to, will not. I will not do I that. I have to say, the only time I like being shared is on social media. Just saying, you know. Oh. You ever thought of that? that uh, I mean, like. That, that, that's that's fine. That's it fine. depends on what you're being shared about. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Like, we also need to thank our official sponsor of the show, yes. Bailey's Cigar Room. If you, have, if you can't figure it out, it's where we are right here. We're in Bailey's. We're in Bailey's. They don't even know we're here. We said we were spraying we're for the bugs. We're in the back room. And we went in the back and set up cameras, and they're all like, what are you doing? We're, like, we're filming the box. So <laughs> we have snuck in. But come see us on Veterans Inc. Karen Crow. It's your one-stop shop for all your tobacco-related products except cigarettes. Why? Because they're nasty. They're nasty. <laughs> Very nasty. Literally, we did come in the so rear end. So nasty. When I, <laughs> yeah. Just saying. So they're doing some construction on Derek Plaza <laughs> Drive. So I had to tell her, say, hey, look, you're going to have to make the next left after that street and then enter from the rear. And then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I said enter from the rear. He's like, ha, 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 ha. Like a junior high kid. <laughs> enter from the rear. Don't mind us. We're just entering from it's the like rear. If you, if you haven't noticed, I watched Beavis and Butthead when it was first run. <laughs> and I loved it. Oh my god! It's like, hey, wait, aren't you like that genius guy? Yeah, and we like Beavis and Butthead. We... <laughs> it just makes sense. Oh my god! I was like, they have it all figured out, man. Yeah, it's, it's just all like there, man. it's all about getting girls to let you touch their thingies. <laughs> I liked it when I could understand what they were actually saying. Which, oh my god! Which were some episodes. I but. don't want to be because there is a lady present. I don't want to sound gross, but there's a story. Where with with what you just said, where we used to play, and the people who were watching are gonna geek out on this one. So we so when we whenever we would go to a Bernard Hopkins uh, uh, fight, we would play a game because let me tell you something. And I know this is crass or whatever, but when you go there, there's there's prostitutes everywhere, right? So they're all there. Oh, MGM. Oh, we're gonna have a great time. And uh, so we would play a game like how far could we get them to go? <laughs> Before you, you don't actually sleep with them. Or if you give like them that. money, they'll pretty much go wherever you want. Yeah, them I know, to. but that was the thing. You don't give them money. You see how far you can go with them. <laughs> it's like, like oh, that's like shoplifting. I didn't know who you are. You yes. realize that? Yes, that's like a crime. But it was a game. <laughs> we would all play the game because we because we would all stay in the hotel at Mandalay Bay. So we would all be there, and then like you go down there, and then they're all like they're like. Oh, let's go hang out. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Let's go up to the room. So you go up to the room and you see how far and like the person you can get it for, the furthest anyone's ever gotten. By the way, is just a touch <laughs> <laughs> on zippiness. <laughs> and then they were like, mm, you I'm should done. have picked that as your word. You'd already got him drinking. I know, right? Uh, I know. Oh. Yeah, okay. oh, sorry. You got to tell him we're playing the game. Well, I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting. There. Sorry. We haven't even really finished the formal housekeeping, and John's all just like, "Let me tell you about some hookers." Yeah. No, it wasn't <laughs> hook. I mean, they they were hookers, but we didn't. We didn't. Ew, ew. You didn't know they were hookers. You just no. We like, knew why they were hookers. Asking for my we wallet? were like, we're like, you guys are so apparent. <laughs> like nobody wears a gown dress to a thing. <laughs> Do you know that hookers nowadays, because of technology, they actually have card swipers built into their vaginas. That's insane. I'm totally so that's what that barcode was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would never. I would this never is, do this such is things. Anyway, come see Jamie. Come see Gary. Don't come see us because we're or ex sponsors. <laughs> Thank God. Well, we also have to give a shout out to the coolest online cigar magazine. It's the Not Gentlemanly Cigar Smokers magazine. My good friend Chris, he runs it. I write reviews for it. 
I'm preparing our next review, which is on the Camacho Criollo that we smoked a couple weeks ago. I Loved picked up it. another one because it's like, I need to be fresh before I get into this review. But I'm going to knock that out. It's going to be up there. If you get a VIP, you get exclusive content, which means you get to read my full review. Otherwise, you get to read the first half of each word that I write, which is really confusing. So <laughs> make sure you get the it's VIP. the cigar no, and that's the, it. The first that's half. all you get. You get the cigar. <laughs> yes. So we're going to have a link in the description. So go make sure you check that out. And we also have our live show that we're, I'm still trying to line up guests for it. It's been very difficult, but I'm working on it. I'm going to get it. And then uh, we'll let everybody know at least a week in advance so y'all can make plans to tune in and ask us really embarrassing questions about apparently Vegas hookers. Uh, so, uh, hey, there's what's nothing called it? wrong this with live it. show? Tell me about this live show. I'm not here. Okay, so. <laughs> don't know anything about it. Normally our shows, we record them, we edit them, and then we upload them. Uh-huh. And we were like, we decided when we hit the 100 subscriber milestone that we would have a live show where it's just like like an AMA where we broadcast it live and everybody can that, that knows about it can tune in and they can send us questions. And so it's going to be a, a, a live ask me anything type type format. I don't know what we're going to be smoking, but you can bet it's, it's, it will be amazing. I'm, I'm hoping it's from a communist country. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> but, but we shall see. And, and so I'm, I'm working on getting so I want to have a really banging lineup for that. Um, That's fair. And then the last thing I need to talk Wait, about. Wait, time out. So I'm yes. not part of the banging lineup for live show. I'm only good enough for recorded shows. There's nothing wrong with being recorded. Well, just saying. You're gonna, in very distinguished back. company, I mean, Miss. You, you opened the door to that. <laughs> She's like, you opened Pandora's box. All right. Hey. If you could convince viewers to drop comments that we should have you back for the live show, I'll have you back for the live show. Oh, deal. Done. Deal. Because Love like it. I can't get them to drop comments. I've offered this in dick pics and everything, and they're like, nope. <laughs> they won't even say no. They're really. like, not even, not even, <laughs> not even gonna go for that. And I'm like, I'm like, I will, I will like mail you really racy photos of Murray, and people still will not drop comments. We're just too lazy to just stop and write what we're thinking. I, I, don't, I don't think I that's mean, what it is. I just I think that. I am. Okay. Well, yeah. Then there's our there's our. I mean, people. I'm like I may love this, but I'm like, do I really want to have to go? Oh, oh then find the emoji, and then I mean, come on, you know, it's like I'm there in spirit. <laughs> it's it's all. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> She's honest. <laughs> and that's and, 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 and that's and that's the, that's the thing, man. It's like when you when you meet a woman who's like matured, they can just be honest. It's all it's all those little teeny boppers, you know, the kind you like, where they're just like. <laughs> Or wow. they take a selfie and it says, I love this show. Like, <laughs> they're like, I don't know if I can marry you. I have such daddy issues. And he's like, just call me daddy. And they're like, deal. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> call me daddy and here's my ATM card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get that knife out of my back. <laughs> okay. But seriously, like, we're supposed to smoke some cigars at some point. We're like really, really getting carried away in those cigars. So before we get to the sticks, which are going to be fantastic. I'm very excited for the sticks. Oh, it's me too. We are playing. Wait, wait, wait. Who mm. chose the sticks? Okay. All right. The lovely lady here. The lady. She chose the sticks. So the, the story for the sticks, we, we I, she comes in and I'm giving her the tour of the place and there's three humidors in Bailey's. That's how <laughs> awesome it is. So come check it out. There's the flavored or infused cigar humidor, which we call the kiddie pool. And then <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's the... The uh, kiddie pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. That's that's just good. I love the way you articulate <laughs> the kiddie pool. It's called being a dick, John. <laughs> He's so articulate. Like, no, I'm just an asshole. Uh, then there's the big humidor, and then there's like the VIP top tier silver tuna humidor. And that's the one where we live. And that's the one where she's like, I want to look in there, and I'm like, I like to cut your jib, madam. <laughs> <laughs> and so Gary's like. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, look, look, look. It's like he points out this Ashton, Connecticut. She's like, that looks a little too sissy for me. And she's like, I'll, I'll, I want to look at that Julius Caesar. And I was like, well, hello. <laughs> You're speaking my language. And he's like, he's like, all right. So I was like, I've actually never had that. She's like, oh, if he hasn't had that, we're having that. I'm making him come. I was like, okay, all right. Let's do it. You can push me around. It's fine. <laughs> with my stick. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I like Farrah more and more every day Aww. so anyway we are playing for those following at home we are playing our patented gentleman and a scholar drinking game yes we are we have each show them ladies show them gentlemen oh we've each written god. down a word we Peace don't know what it is ladies. I think I'm going to change mine real quick then. Oh, oh, she, oh, oh, she's on the fly. oh she's like I've heard what he says I'm going to change it oh yeah anytime anyone says your written word you call them out they take a drink and then we have we have Bottles, we, everything. Who knows how this day is going to end up going? So, without further ado, bring on the sticks. 
The lady. The lady. Present the sticks. Take it out and show it to us. The it's backwards. <laughs> this is this is the Julius Caesar from A.J. Newman. It is, uh, well, I mean, A.J. Newman is the line that they make the diamond crown. Yeah. So the Maximus, which we're going to feature on the show, uh, that is an amazing cigar. And then you've got your Black Diamond, which I always try to have at least one of those in my humidor just because it's a badass little bastard you mean which what which humidor the big the bigger or the biggest <laughs> like you got so many humidors how many do you have <laughs> he's got like three now in my house three oh. see but then i got one at john's house yeah and then, I have, one a, of my own. then I have a whole bunch of travel humidors but, yeah. but uh, poor Lindsay. What? i mean, I mean <laughs> he's like last week so, i just spent six hundred dollars okay on right, don't say poor Lindsay. don't say poor Lindsay because just she's smoking week, them she dropped 200 bucks on Cuban cigars. Yes. Oh, that's my girl. Okay. And so they're actually in my, my El Rey de Mundo Habano Festival humidor, which is amazing. And maybe one day I'll bring it. Well, actually, it was in our studio. Yep. It was, it it was, was. behind the table. So it, that is a really a gorgeous, handmade humidor. And I can't amazing. wait to fill it with the most amazing Cohibas. Because if you can't tell by the hat that I'm wearing, I love Cohiba. Cohiba. You've been saying that a lot lately. Dude, have you seen my Cohiba collection? Dude, like it's like seven million posts you do every day. I like Cohiba. I do. I, I I see that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, mean, dude, I I'm called the scholar on a cigar show. I'm supposed to have eclectic, like cool tastes in cigars. So like I like Cohiba. So it's your job to get him a modeling contract for. Oh, it's already in the works. Okay. Deal. We already have everything going. Well, I mean, I've already got the stash. Have you seen this thing? It's it's getting so big. It has to get its own social security number. <laughs> See, that's why I trim this thing down. Because right. normally it's down here. Right. Let, let's present the sticks, and then I'm going to yes. get really, really here, uncomfortable here, here. Okay. Lovely. All right. We have a cutter here. I'll go ahead here. This is going to be a long show. This is going to be fun. <laughs> we, we, have, we have a lot of time here. Wait, so this did, is, you, oh my goodness. did you Purell your fingers before, you know? Just... No, I, I walked them on the bum, <laughs> but I've got a good bum. No. All right. Crap. Thank there you, you go. Sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's thank you delightful. so much. This is amazing. Are you just saying I gotta that? Say, no, the, no, 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 no. Inspector- it's, like, it's like honey raisin. Dude, do you see the sheen on this? Mm-hmm. It's got a little shine. That's that's oils, buddy. That tells you this is going to be muy bueno. Oh, the, the, it's like almost like a flower I'm smelling here. Oh, I can't wait to get into this thing. It's real nice. There's a fine line between being a cigar smoker and a pyromaniac because you both get excited about setting shit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. Can I have the cutter, please? Uh-oh, that's I right. suppose if you wanted to cut. If you want to cut something. <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing, as my grandmother why, would say. Why do you like cutting things, man? <laughs> my grandmother was the queen of the oblique compliment where she would say something that was like really insulting, but it was supposed to be a compliment. Where I thought that it, was called a backhanded compliment. Yeah, well, you know. You when, said the oblique. When you have six degrees, it's an oblique compliment. <laughs> it's six degrees. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, but, man. But she would like go to someone's house, and they would show us, and she was like, oh, that's what you like? Oh, is, is, that, like is, that? is that it? <laughs> Dude, she would get along famously with the people from where I'm from. So what, what's her story? My grandmother's story? Mm-hmm. Where's she from? Uh, she's from Opelousas, I think. And she's like, she got diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer about 10 years ago. And death was like, I ain't taking that bitch. <laughs> she is you, too negative you. for me. And so she, she beat cancer. And the doctors are like, we don't understand. And I'm like, well, apparently you don't appreciate the power of negativity. <laughs> Hi, Carumba. You like it? Oh, my God. I'm having mixed emotions over here. No, no, ladies first. It started off I'm the gentleman. I'm mixed emotions, and I'm getting nervous. John is just kind of like that, though, sometimes, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. Can you help me here? I haven't lit one of these in a year, right. thanks to COVID. Oh, For, yeah. A 45-degree angle. Like this, and then don't, don't puff on it yet, which I'll tell you. I want you just to turn it, rotate it in your just fingers. Just set my hair on fire. Oh, oh he's, he's gonna do it. Told you he's gonna do it. <laughs> I swear to you, I have a steady. Have a All right, now we can puff on plant it. Plant outside of <laughs> the go, go, go puff, puff. There you go. There you go. Oh, lovely. There you go. You're perfect. There you go. Earlier, she was like, "Are you just gonna talk in different accents?" And I was like, "It's kind of gonna happen. That's my thing." I don't this know. is really good. It is. It is quite good. Mm. Oh, 
fair. All right. So, so I far, know. I, uh, and I'm not, I'm loving it. I don't understand where, why John was apprehensive. He's like, I don't know about this. I'm not a smoker. So I smoke twice a year with a really good friend of mine. So it's been a while. But this is, this is good. <sighs> so tell us, tell us like about it? that before we, oh, before, oh, thank you. Oh my God. I was so worried. Why are we so worried? worried? Oh Dude, my. it smells like a flower. <laughs> it smells like a flower. It, it and have, when you it, taste it, 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 it's, it's, it's something. Dry it goes back yes, to it did. what we talked about the other day. Don't judge a book by its cover, right? Mm, that's right. Yeah. It's true. Mm. Oh, it's way better than I thought it was going to be. It tastes uh-huh. like a flower when it was... Dude, the dry pool was like... I was Between the smell and the dry pool, I was like, oh my God. This is going to be like... We toast May. <laughs> like, no. No, no, and no. It's, it's not. I oh, can tell by looking so at the wrapper that this was going to be, as, as, as John would say, a man cigar. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. You're he, welcome. He, he, actually, he, actually, <laughs> he actually told Lindsay that he, she should give him the cigar she was smoking because it was a man cigar. And then, <laughs> and then he was like, I'm going to take two drinks right now because I said the word twice. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> wait, wait. You said a word? I. I Oh, she's just taking a drink. She's just she's just showing I'm sympathy just for you. I'm supporting. This is really good. I, I love it. I love it. Damn you. You're welcome. I'm trying to think of the word. It's going to kill me. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. You're just going to ruin the show. I, I'm not going to ruin the show. Trust me. I'd rather be drunk. I have no idea if I'm smoking this right. Am I you, you are. This right? Yeah, you are. You're holding it right. You look you look fine. You, but you know what would really do yeah, better? I like this. I know. It would really go better if you took a drink because you said the word. You have to say the word. Oh, he's got us. Oh. He's taking advantage of me. Okay, so just so we know, they wrote their words down like five seconds. I spent a while coming up with my word. He spent 15 minutes picking one word. He, just one word. Mm. It's wrong. It's wrong. Would not want to be in your mind for a day. Oh. I, don't, I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to be in, in my head. I have to stop the conversation right now. Farah, thank you. I, I was, I'm telling you, at first, I was... I was kind of had reservations on the smell. <laughs> it was it was the oil. It was kind of like really strong. It's like a flowery smell. Mm. But once you get in mm. the app, the, the, I'm talking about the the, the the little tidbit at the end. Oh, it's so good! Oh it is, my goodness! It is, it is like okay, very girl. composed. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna do this. Up top. What? <laughs> it was. This is on the tide. This is wow. Yes, I, I wasn't yes, prepared for that. Yes, yes. Take a well, drink, please. I, oh, son of a biscuit! I wasn't prepared for that. Like I, I'm a six oh one. Everyone knows if you watch the show, you know I'm a six oh one fan. Huge six oh one fan. I think this is my new six oh one. Well, there's a reason why it's in the VIP humidor. This is true. Oh, what's the price point on on this? Because um, I'm gonna go broke. No, it's like twenty five or something like that. So I don't, no, like, no, 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 no. I don't think it was. I don't think it was in the twenties. I think it was like mid to early, mid to high teens. Uh, are you sure? I don't know. It's not as expensive as the Maximus. The Maximus is like that's like twenty. That's, that's like, like twenty eight for their big. Yeah, it's one. almost thirty. And 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 so I think this one is like sixteen or eighteen. We could call Gary in here. And, could this you know, be your new favorite? I just, yeah, that's why I said everyone who knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of the 601 Maduro mm. this is my new 601 Maduro it's so mellow but yet so powerful it's the like, end notes are exactly everything I'm, yes well, mellow but powerful it is. that is me it, it, it's a total pharaoh it's a pharaoh yes it is it should be a pharaoh <laughs> Caesar Cigar. What's wrong, John? I'm just gonna keep my mouth. I'm the gentleman. <laughs> I'm the gentlemanly. I feel like a blowfish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so tell us, tell us about the cigars you normally smoke, Vera. They're usually they're Cubans. I'm um, very strong. Um, I have a good friend who is a doctor in Arizona and comes to New Orleans twice a year for conferences. And I usually meet up with him. And um, this is our thing. For two days, we just hit New Orleans cigar bars and smoke and it's awesome. New Orleans cigar bars. Jeez. Like, well, I mean, they're like, they're very classy bars. I mean, you know, it's New Orleans so and my, my first, my first you, reaction. Well, first of all, you're going to get in trouble because you're going to burn the felt here no. that your friend I, asked us to take care of. Hey, no Did one I just lo- call that's you out? No, no one, no one locks a tattler. <laughs> all right. We're all grown ups here. I'm not toddling. I'm trying to keep you from getting in trouble. It's like it's like bring up the lubriderm. The table's a bit ashy. 
Yes. So anyway, so Jamie introduced me to cigars probably about six years ago, and um, it's a it's quite a treat. We just sit there and we catch up on life and mm. do our thing. Try the retro hail, dude. <laughs> I, I will on the next one. So I have to say, like, uh, I'm this is my new cigar. If you're only smoking like twice a year, but you're smoking Cuban cigars. Are you really appreciating how amazing Cuban cigars are? Oh, probably not. I mean, oh I'm not as God. well versed oh as you guys are. Like, but that's people. But it, dude, it's nice. She's driving yeah. Ferraris twice oh a year. Oh, my like, Come on, dude. So many people are got posting on the internet about like, hey, look, I got these in the mail. Are they great? And they're like sands coming out of the glass case of these Cohibas. And everybody's like, dude, that's fake. You know? <laughs> like, people are really struggling to smoke good Cubans, like real ones. And, and she's just like... But y- y- oh yeah, oh yeah. People are just like I walk down the street, and people are chucking the bottles at me because I uh, hear smoke these. Yeah. Like, okay, but listen. I had one that was she's so strong. Driving it, Ferraris. I don't drive Ferraris. Nope. It means the, the cigars. The, the cigars. cigars. Oh, okay. The, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm learning reference. the lingo. No, no, no. It's no, a metaphor. Okay. Yes. It's a so I mean, if you're driving Ferraris, you're not driving like an acid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. She's driving good cars. She's not driving crap cars. I, I know. I know. I was a little concerned that she wouldn't like the the stick today because I mean, if if, if habanos are what you're used to, you're gonna find New World sticks kind of deficient. But no, she is, killed it on this one. This I'm pretty really diverse. What can I say? This is pretty good. It's yeah. pretty good. Awesome. A plus for me. Woohoo! Okay, so who, who wants to talk about what they're tasting in their opening third of the cigar? Ladies first. Well, you said flowers. I don't. D- know. Okay, so what I meant by that is that when. You do the, like, I smell everything. I like to see where I'm going to go with it. And everyone knows I like a harsh cigar. So, when I started smelling flowers, I was like, ooh, I was apprehensive. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, oh, this is not going to be for me. Um, <laughs> and, and everyone knows that I'm the most blunt, honest person when it comes to cigars. I'll even tell someone to their face, that's not a good cigar. Even though it's their cigar. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to go there who that is. But... <laughs> this one is every bit of the smell will put you off. You are judging a book by its cover, like you guys said. But the bottom line is, I would buy this cigar as my lead cigar. I would too. I would too. <laughs> that that is that is so compelling. I would drink to that. But I didn't say the word. You did. So go ahead, buddy. <laughs> what is the word? It's the thing you keep I know, saying. I know what it is. Oh. Now I know what oh, it is. Oh, he thinks he knows what it is. Uh-oh. This is the best part. Is he's like, I figured it out. It's Aunt Jemima. You're like, no. It's not Aunt Jemima. <laughs> he's going to be speaking it's with blanks. cigar. <laughs> <laughs> is it the word? <laughs> Survey says. Dang it. I was about to say, if it took you 15 minutes to choose a word and you chose cigar, that would have been a real buzzkill. No, it wasn't. It must it be wasn't. the word I. Okay. Y'all, y'all, okay. Th- there's no, you just still get to rattle off guesses. I don't know what you think I, it is. I think it's I. Oi. Oi. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm no, sure. I don't think it is. You would have made me drink like 10 times already. Well, you know, I'm thinking maybe <laughs> Lindsay and I should start our own female cigar club. Actually, that's uh, now a thing, and I actually like that idea. Lindsay, give me a call, girl. We got People this. are talking about Lindsay starting a female cigar group because yes, everybody loves women who smoke cigars because be it's hot. Just letting you know, it's hot. And Lindsay's like the authority in the local cigar. Like she's already posting reviews, buying Cuban cigars. I mentioned that already, right? <gasps> My girl likes Cuban. <laughs> but no, I'm serious. Like that's now like the the top thing in our little niche market is women who like really great cigars. Dude, I have to ask you. How do you handle having that beard? I'm like, this thing is killing me. It's like four weeks, and I'm, it's I feel like I've got work. a big fat cat stuck up against my mouth all the time, and I'm just like, this is. This is the most common question. Like, it's like one of those senses. Everyone comes out there like they're like, so what do you put in it? I'm like, nothing. I use like tea tree oil. Like that's what I do. I like put it in there every once in a while. If it, if I feel like it's gross or whatever, I put tea tree oil. And like, there's a lot of oils involved in like long beards. Because it's this is short. This is the shortest I've had it in a long time. But long story short, you got like the stash, like the real stash. I don't, I don't know if I can handle it anymore, man. It's really. Please take it off. It's a lot. Look, look your wife lied to you, <laughs> Lindsay. 
I love you, but you're killing my buddy. He's a gorgeous man, and you're hiding behind a friggin' stash. Stop playing with his emotions. You look way better without it. How's it looks, my beard? It's lovely. Thank you. Listen, and, 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 and Fair, uh, see, Fair doesn't know me. I've just met her today, but I'm going to tell you like this. The reason why I wear this beard. I don't really care. But, well, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Because <laughs> I'm the gentleman and I like to talk. She's saucy today. Yeah, she's, she's out there. Go ahead, tell me. <laughs> anyway, so, so I was in the military and I was actually blown up and the majority of this has been reconformed or whatever. So it's kind of like, this is my way of shaping my face. Because mm-hmm. like this chin kind of goes like this and like this kind of... it. We have to... See, I was blown up. Like half of this is fake. Like I could show you like Well, you know, x-rays. a lot of guys your age have two chins. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't. So, I mean, and I don't have two chins. I'm sure you're handsome either way. He's like my one chin is two angstroms off center <laughs> mass, and yeah, I feel like the and, elephant and man over here. I am not an animal. So, I am a I'm not a narcissist man. or anything like that. I, I'm really not that person. No, but no, I the, the flip side is, is, is I, I mean, I'm on camera. I don't want to look weird, but I will make sure that. I'm, so you shouldn't give him shit for the beard if it makes him feel better about himself. As a friend, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, but but he's Have my you bro, seen so he's, like he's autistic. He's like, if it's not on center, I'm the his nose. Look at that thing; it's crooked as shit. Well, I don't want to say anything, but since you brought it up, so how do you feel about everybody blaming autism for your behavior and your mannerisms now? This is right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I love my buddy. Yeah, but maybe it's just his personality. I mean, autism is part of who he is. I mean, yeah, and, that, and that's what I accept. Well, see, the thing is, is that I don't. I don't see the emotional like association exactly. behind the things that and I that's say. That's what I love. And I so actually, I, dig I, that. I say things, and then I make people cry, and I'm just like, I don't understand why that made you cry and, because what I said was true. And they're like, yeah, but it was hurtful. And so like, I'm trying to like my whole life's mission is to figure out like how to anticipate that. So it's very difficult. However, though, those people need to exercise and learn what emotional intelligence is, because if they were truly self-aware and had some self-confidence and self-worth, they wouldn't be so sensitive to what you're saying. Just saying. I just say they're dumb. Dude, we can't Fair keep blaming fistball. others for our negative and disappointing yeah, exactly. emotions. Exactly. I we tell that to him all emotions. the time. I tell him that all the time. I said, actually, yeah. I appreciate when you do the things that you do because actually it's more honest than fake people who are like, mm-hmm. oh my God, you're just so gorgeous. And you're like, no, no, no. Like when my baby's Stop cute. Actually, like the actually, whole my baby cute things. Like oh, you have a dude, newborn. And you're you're like, like, my newborn baby is so cute. And you're no, like, your baby it looks, looks like, like an alien. A watermelon. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I haven't seen yeah. such something so ugly since Olive Love. <laughs> but, but that's real. Like honesty and being actually 100% and you don't understand you're doing it because you don't have that little thing like, oh, am I hurting their feelings? We appreciate that. Whether you like, want to believe yeah. it or not. I do too. No. And, and if you make me cry, then then that's on me. That's my problem. Yeah, it's yep. not yours. And yep. I shouldn't make you feel badly for making me cry. Oh, because dude, you may he have said, said something. something to me that I was like, at first I was like, that was cold, <laughs> and then and then I actually reflected on it. I was like, actually, I deserve that. Yeah, I, every bit of that, and I'm gonna own it. But and you did, did. You did text back, dude. That was cold. <laughs> But I love that. But that's feedback, and I'm sure it you appreciate is feedback, feedback because I have yeah. to give you feedback. Data is key it, with, exactly. with with people with autism. Data is key. Mm-hmm. I'm like that was cold, but I accept your opinion and what you're saying, and I I grow with it. That's emotional. How am I supposed to learn if you don't give me data to get, to grow with? If you were so sensitive to everything that he said that hurt you, you guys wouldn't be friends anymore, and it's not really. Worth no, that. I love that. Man. Yes, and that, he doesn't even this, know how much I appreciate. This is why it. relationships fail in the first place: is we don't have patience for each other, and we're not willing to learn each other's communication language. Thank you. you know? And so once My you learn that, is a woman always right. <laughs> That's not a love language. It is the way I speak it. <laughs> it's Alex's love. Sprinkling the dick. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> Don't make me life coach you guys during a cigar show. Okay, <laughs> so now that you mentioned that, let's let's uh, we need to take this moment to we we need, we need to get into Farah here. Let, let me rephrase that. Let me let me ask her some questions. Yeah, well, I'm trying to make sure my you life made my brain go. go <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why we thought you'd be a great guest on our show is that you have your own podcast yes. and you are a life coach and I represent a lot of people who desperately would need a life coach. So tell us about what you do. Yeah, uh, you know, it's so weird because uh, five years ago I was going through a divorce and a lot of death in my family and during that process... What? 
Oh. <laughs> back back that up, please. What part? <laughs> so you were going through some things, and it made you. It, it, it was your singularity. Mm-hmm. Like you said, oh no, there, boom, there it is. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't learn what personal growth was, or personal development, or self love was until I was, you know, thirty nine, forty years old. Yeah, and and that's the case. That's for a most woman people. said that. See. See, most people fault men for that, mm-hmm. but that was a woman who just said it. Thank you. Got another fist bump. I actually really like her. Why are we not I can't, friends? Wait. I can't believe she's over 40. Yeah. yeah. I know. Jeez. I just had a birthday. I yeah. wouldn't have, Well, happy birthday. I wouldn't have said she ages like my sister. Dude, my you sister, have not met my sister. My sister is 49, and she looks like she could be 35, which yeah. incidentally is the age of a husband. You need to meet Joanna then. <laughs> Oh, speaking of my sister. Okay, my sister is this like she's this literary expert, and she writes and she teaches these courses, and she married a poet. So I gotta give this up. <laughs> Angelina, poet. this is That's for awesome. you. Okay, I'm gonna. You're, you're gonna have to represent my sister. It's a joke I wrote for my sister. Knock knock. Who's there? To. To who? To whom? <laughs> <laughs> So this is actually the person who helped you with uh, shards. Then. That's right. That's right. She helped me write the movie. She she was like, okay, your 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 scene mechanics are intense. Your your story is terrifying, but like, let's make it human. And yeah. so she she helped me write my characters. And, and wait, you wrote a you wrote a movie? I did. I did. That's 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 why what, we do what, what we do. What is it about? Um, well, I can't disclose that really. Um, it's a Not psychological. Here. Horror movie, I can tell you after the show's over. But um, it. it's copywritten, and we are um, in the process of shooting our concept video to secure our distribution and our funding. After? After we do the television show that we're going to work on. There you go. I think. Like, Just saying if you need oh, some help. Oh, well, all right then. All we right. need a all right. Fair enough, fair enough. By the way, it's a great cigar. Am I smoking this thing right? Yeah, you are. Look, actually, when you hold it, like... The trick is to not put your mouth on the burnt end. Just some constructive criticism. In the beginning of the show, you should do a tutorial for those of us who don't smoke regularly. Oh, we do. So, (laughs) I don't look like a blowfish. Well, our our, our entire first episode. (laughs) Like, is that how you do it? (laughs) You know? Do you ever have people do that? I'm just saying... (laughs) <laughs> it's like Al Pacino over here. Hoo-ah, hoo-ah. She had a great ass. And you had your head all the way up it. <laughs> you can fit your head all the mean, way up it. I don't know. I love this thing. I'm loving it. I have not seen a, a cigar have this kind of sheen on it that wasn't a Cuban cigar. This you is know, really amazing. That's the reason why I decided to go for it, first and foremost, is it had a sheen and the leaves are just, I don't know how to explain it. They're very delicate and... Just they're wrapped so tightly without a lot of crease. The the wrapper is flawless. It is a beautiful wrapper. Oh, this just tells you when you're getting towards nice. the end, and then. It, then it, 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 so should I put it back on then? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Like you know, whatever. Sometimes, so this is also it's called the band and also the ring. And John gets very nervous when a woman takes off her ring. Did I violate? Did I violate cigar code by taking off the ring? That's just- Okay, I can't get it on. I'm, Self-reflection. I Self-reflection. A, I have a naked cigar, guy. Sorry. Like, I like the naked it's cigar. It's okay. This isn't a... I like we, we have naked. To, with every video we upload, we have to tell YouTube it's not suitable for kids. So, it's fine. Every single time. Or women under 40. Or, or women... Oh, well, I wouldn't say... They may say, cry when they hear Alex I wouldn't, talk. I wouldn't say all that. So, tell us about... Tell, tell, you were talking about like the things that happened yeah. before John was all like, wait a minute, what? So, so you, you got Damn, divorced. I'm sorry. You, what, okay. what motivated you to become a life coach? Because I have so many questions about life coaching. Yeah, so it's interesting. I, uh, I landed my dream job, moved to a city that I loved, and John's already laughing. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Every time I think life coach, I think of Sausage Fingers guy. Tony Robbins. <laughs> yes. She's way smaller than Tony Robbins. But uh, I would listen to her over Tony Robbins. You know, life coach is a really, it's, it's just a title. Um, you know, I think each coach is different in their own way and provides a different type of, a, of work and service. And, and you, are, you have some mainstream so-called life coaches, um, you know, who like, who are the tree hugger kind and who are a little more unrealistic when it comes to their technique of, of Ooh, understanding personal growth cold. and development. So what is... Wait, how's that cold? Tree hugger? They're like woo people, you know, it's it's like, you know... Call them hippies. <laughs> okay, hippies, good deal. 
it's but, all coming together you now, know I we're think. all different you choose a life coach just like you do a therapist one that fits your personality and your needs so that's so what is it works. for the uninitiated because i when i think of life coach i'm thinking of like tom hanks from a league of their own being like there's no crying in marriage <laughs> but like you know there is so like obviously i don't know what a life coach is so, you know, a, a, you know, let's think about Sean Payton and Drew Brees, right? Yep. The Saints, they have a coach, Sean yep. Payton, who's amazing, right? And without them, the Saints would not be as phenomenal as they were, especially Drew Brees would not be the legendary quarterback that he is. And so, you know, there, we always have coaches in life. They may not be called coaches, you know, they could be our CEOs, they could be our mentors, they could be our parents, whatever the case is. But the, the, the uniqueness about having a life coach is life is difficult no matter what you're going through. And sometimes you just don't know how to sort out that crossroads that you're at or you don't quite understand why you feel a certain way about something or how to get through something that is terrible in life. And so what we are trained are as a life coach is we are different from therapists, whereas usually therapy, which I support and I, I still have a therapist, they, they try to uncover the past to find out why you feel the way you do and why you react to certain things. It's like uncovering your trauma. But what I do, as a as a coach is once you've uncovered your trauma i help you get through it in real time and, and what you face now in your life and how does that trauma surface but how do you get through it and so basically what we do is a lot of emotional intelligence training uh, we do a lot of neuro-linguistic programming um, which is reframing how you think and how you speak um, and and really understanding childhood trauma and your patterns as an adult and why it impacts your relationships um, and also I help you look at your future what do you want for yourself what's your dream job what's your dream career what's your dream relationship and how do you catapult that process to get to it um, you know as human beings especially adults uh, when we get 18 and we go to college, we stop parenting ourselves. We stop being disciplined. And so what a coach can do is help an adult become more disciplined and motivate you because no one is going to walk into my living room and say, Farrah, turn off the TV. You have work to do. As an adult, I have to be self-motivated sometimes. And if I suck at that, which I do, I have a coach that I can talk to once a week to keep me on track if I want to accomplish a big goal. Can I ask you a, a really serious question? Sure. So... Do you believe, and this is, I'm, I'm being 100% open and honest with this, do you believe that women mature faster than men? Not necessarily. Our maturity level is, is really dependent on our childhood. We learn the behaviors and uh, mannerisms and um, ways of life from our parents. And sometimes our parents are stumped in an immature reality, unfortunately. Um, and so as an adult, um, when you turn 18 or whatever your adult status is for yourself and you become your own individual, especially in college, that's why kids change so much in college is they're exposed to the real world and different personalities. And so they're able to realize, gosh, what my parents taught me really does not apply to society or apply to my, my thinking or my way of life. I mean, you know, we hear a lot about, let's talk about, we live in the South and I don't want to dive deep into racism, but unfortunately living in the South, our generation, our parents and grandparents are come from a very racist culture it's what they know it's what they've been taught by their parents and so what we have to do is as we have children we have to change that behavior by educating our kids about racism and why it's not right and how it just hinders a community and how we have to be open and share kindness and and you know so it's up to us as individuals to change the trajectory of our children so that they have a better life than we do but you have to realize though that the way you may be parenting or the way you live your life is not substantial it's not in a positive direction and it's actually hindering you and it keeps you stuck in these traumas of your past so it almost sounds like your approach is focusing on what are the initial roots of the the pathologies the the bad behavior or, or what you call the trauma would that be fair yeah absolutely so so I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, you know, when I got my dream job and I moved, I was still married. But when I got there, I realized, which I had lived on my own for the first time and since, since an adult, I realized I had lost my complete identity in my relationship, which was a 16-year relationship. And while my ex-husband and I had a beautiful relationship and I loved him, I didn't know who I was and I didn't understand why I was feeling so out of sorts. I'm like, I have this great dream job. What is wrong with me? Why am I not, not happy? I've got a great husband. And then, you know, I realized it's because I had lost me. I never grew as an individual, right? And I didn't know what self-love and self-worth was. I spent 16 years living the life that somebody else wanted me to live. And as a result, when I'm on my own trying to make it, I couldn't. I was stumped because I had stumped my own personal growth. 
because I didn't allow it and understand it. And my parents didn't teach me what that was. So I ended up going through a divorce and my dream job. And then shortly after that, my father died. And, and this Ooh. is all in a six month period. I'm moving to a new city by myself. I have my dream job, trying to learn it. I have a new manager. Uh, my marriage is on the rocks now because I don't know what the hell I want. And then my father passes away and I- Can I, can I stop you for two seconds? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're fine. So were you looking to your spouse to make you happy? Absolutely. Yeah, but I didn't know any That different. is 100% the number one reason why some marriages, some mm -hmm. marriages fail because they're looking to the other person to make them happy. And it's, and it's sad. Yeah, so, you know, in my situation, I I went through the divorce and, and finally I... I asked for short-term disability for time off to grieve my father's death. And with that, the corporation I worked with said, sure, we'll give it to you, but you have to go to counseling. It's mandatory if you want your paycheck. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't need counseling. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine, but I will do it to get my paycheck, right? So I go see the counselor, and you have to fill out an assessment, and I failed it because I was having suicidal tendencies and suicidal thoughts. And that happens. my suicidal thoughts were so regular that... I thought it was normal for people to think about suicide. I thought that's what normal people do. I would say that's normal. But it's not. It's not. <laughs> and so as I'm going through therapy and I realize, like she tried to, to admit me into an intensive care facility and I sat there for an hour waiting for admit on a Friday and I was like, screw this. I'm I, These people are crazy. I don't need to be here. I don't need to be looked at, right? So we negotiated that I would stay with someone over the weekend and then be back in therapy on Monday. And so I did that. And what I learned in that process through therapy is it saved my life. It made me realize I was it suicidal. Um, and, and I'm so grateful to the people in my life at that period because they saved me from committing suicide. And they taught me how to learn how to heal and what self-love and self-growth was. And as I shared my story with other women, I realized that a lot of women feel the same way that I did. And so that's why I wanted to become a life coach. I didn't want to go to school for 20 years to become a therapist, which I'm too old to do that. <laughs> so the next best thing is a life coach. But what I like most about life coach training is that you focus a lot on reprogramming your subconscious mind. Now, I'll backtrack even more. My screwed up life and relationships because I relied on men to make me happy, resulted as when I was two years old, my mother passed away of meningitis. And after her death, my father abandoned me. And so my grandmother raised me. And automatically, a kid at two or pretty much under five, when you don't have that maternal, paternal relationship, it completely changes your DNA. It's called yes. epigenetics. Yes. And you are naturally anxious because you don't have anybody soothing that Yes. internal growth part of you and so I grew up as an anxious child but I was craving love and I didn't know it because my grandmother wasn't really affectionate and so that spiraled into when I started dating I relied on men to fill the void of affection for me and ended up with terrible relationships but but I will say I am happily divorced and single and I have been for five years and it is it is a blessing in disguise and my ex-husband and I are on great terms and I still love him dearly but I needed to be alone on Good my for own you. Good to for heal you. my childhood trauma to understand my anxious attachment disorders and understand the red flags when I am in a relationship so I don't rely on a man to make me happy thank you I want a man to compliment me, to support me, to love me, yes, to respect yes. me, to be my teammate, to be my partner. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to be my caretaker. I don't want him to fill all of my voids. I don't want him to make me feel whole. I want him to be an added bonus to my life. And that's Damn where I'm it, at. You're such a good life coach. Please help these women. Please help these women. Help these women. I think John wants you to Hold help him. Hold out. Men, no, no. She's doing men, she, everything she's saying is exactly how my okay. my But men status. suffer from the same thing. They, that's true. They yes, have that's true. voids as well. A million percent because right. Because you know, men, men, men can grow up in households where their fathers aren't nurturing. They're very hard and sort of abusive. Um, they can grow up with mothers who weren't very affectionate because the dad was so abusive. I mean, so men suffer the same characteristics and personality problems oh, and sure. trauma as women. Million percent However, you are women million. are worse because we are natural born nurturers and we're very emotional beings. Mm -hmm. That okay, I love to hear that because that that tells me like your view of reality is based in objective fact because like a lot of people don't want to acknowledge Dude, she's that, it. She's, that men and women have so different, good. different biological tendencies but yeah. I don't want to sidetrack what you're saying because I, I, I think it's awesome but you need to pass this to John. Oh my god, I'm oh here trying to cigar. Because he needs to, to take two drinks. <laughs> oh!
Dude. I don't mind. What's the word? Did, did we figure it out I, yet? I thought I did, uh-huh. and I screwed it up, so... <laughs> Hold on, I'm coming. I'm a coming. So, have I mentioned I love this game? <laughs> Long story short is I became a life coach so I can help other women change their life because it helps me. Exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's brilliant. I want to tell the women in the world nationally, please <laughs> go seek her understanding and what she's saying because it's truthful because everything i've learned over my um past divorce and i'm not trying to bring that up i'm just saying that it's happened to me someone sought me out to make them happy Mm -hmm. and i wasn't making them happy for whatever they needed and i'm sorry that i couldn't um but i was she put me in that place to fill the void and i'm sorry that i couldn't do that and I was being too honest and open with her. So it, it actually... Well, they make a pill for that. <laughs> so it slapped me back in the face because I thought me being honest with her, telling her all the things that I thought that attracted me to her were uh, the right things. It actually hurt me because she pushed me away because I wasn't giving her what she needed. And I'm, I'm sorry that I couldn't give the person who needed that what she needed. At the moment, I thought I was helping her to grow, and I wasn't. I was actually hurting her. So what were some traits so that's why she that you found attractive about her that you felt like she didn't quite understand? Uh, she, she was the person who she is today, where she's very uh, self-aware, um, um, uh, 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 where she's she's actually stands up for herself more. I kind of, I still find that attractive, um, but... What she doesn't understand is I was trying to guide her to her Mm self-worth is what I was so attracted to in the beginning because she was like, oh, I'm in this really bad time in my life. I don't have this going for me. And when I gave her that, she was like, oh, well, he fills that void. The flip side is, is when I saw that she wasn't growing from that and like learning from the mistakes like I had to do my entire life. Mm -hmm. Um was like I was like why aren't you growing from it though and I kind of tried to help her guide her and I was like you you think you're only worth this but you're worth this mm-hmm. why can't you go and see that for yourself so she, she even had her dad come and yell, like literally he, he like yelled at me and I was like dude why are you yelling I was like dude there's the door get out I'm trying to help my wife and he didn't see it so long story short thank you for being honest and open and saying like dude don't make this person make this put all that burden on them they just want to help you and and again i tried to do that well not only I that, it's patently unfair because if you were relying on your partner to make you happy but you're unhappy because you have these yes, trauma issues and you're you. setting him up for failure and you, you're only you, going to resent you. him it's a big big problem i know that that was something that that my wife and i struggled with was finding a way for her to like see our relationship as it related to her happiness and yeah. once she was able to address deep-seated issues from her past trauma then she was like oh my I god to do one you're point, actually one uh, point, one not point. that difficult to be around for a spurg I'm yeah, like, yeah I, know. I agree you got it you got it so yeah so you know three things that ruin a relationship of course um one is poor communication because had i would have been open with my husband ex-husband about my childhood trauma and 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 this whole boy thing we could have worked it out together but on the flip side i wasn't educated enough about my trauma to even have the conversation sadly enough it took the divorce usually it takes you hitting rock bottom before you realize individually there's something seriously wrong with you right um, the second thing that causes relationships to fail is um, lack of intimacy in a relationship because women are <laughs> afraid of their sexuality, which is a whole other show. Yeah. Dude, you're yeah. not lying with that. The, like, the, yeah. third, the third thing, of course, is the fight over finances, which again goes back to the childhood trauma. Um, you know, if you grew up in a scarcity mindset household, you're going to grow up in a, with how you're going to grow up and have a scarcity mindset, uh, and then you fail to communicate that with your husband or your partner, and then next thing you know, she's buying Louis Vuittons, he's buying boats, and then you're all in debt. You know, so <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's true. What I realized also live within your means. What I realized, uh, which was more profound for me during my journey of personal growth and therapy, and I and I have a life coach, and I hire life coaches still, um, was you know when my parents left me at two years old. I was stuck 
in a two-year-old mentality up until probably five years ago. And what that means is I was overly sensitive to people. Um, when I didn't get my way, I threw a tantrum like a two-year-old would, even though I'm a grown adult. I represent a lot of grown two-year-olds. Seriously, no. This is this this is what happens. Um, and so now, when I when I coach when I coach people, and I see this in my friends as well, is you know when something doesn't go their way and they call me to vent and to talk about it, they resort back to that age where they first experienced childhood trauma. Whether it's two years old, fourteen years old, sixteen years old. I have a client right now. He is a fantastic, the most intelligent individual I've met in my life. But when somebody offers constructive criticism or if things don't go his way, he resorts back to 16 year old little, you know, a little, you know, no, I get a it. Crazy I'm hearing what you're saying. Um, and, and it's because that's when he first experienced trauma that he's never been aware of or dealt with. And so, you know, you have to reflect and, and work out of that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very faith the full and i i embrace my spirituality and and i do frequently have calls um with an angel reader um and what was that so <laughs> she she crosses over she's able to kind of meditate and come in tune with your guardian angels that surround you and she's able to guide you according to what's happening and so one of the last calls i told her i said i do not understand when somebody irritates me why i resort back to a two-year-old mentality i know it's i see it happening i know it's happening and she said she goes well you're doing you're crossing over from one subconscious to another subconscious right from adult to toddler like and she said she said when that happens and you feel the anxiety you know and your face is getting red you know she goes start tapping your fingers and what it does is it keeps it keeps you in a 40 year old state subconsciously you don't resort back to trauma the subconscious of your childhood trauma and it works when i feel people sort of kind of being combative and defensive i'll just sit here and just kind of tap it out and then i'm very calm i'm like thank you for telling me how you feel let's talk about that so you know there are a lot of different techniques that i still have to use so i don't go back to being that two-year-old wow I want to continue this line of thought, but I'm in my second third, so we need to do a little report here. What are you picking up, buddy? Dude, I let, let me tell you something. I am all about this cigar, a million percent. I have to relight it though, because <laughs> I, I I was so. Invested. I just want to point out. Look at this magnificent ash, dude. I I was about to say you're about to like drop that thing. I may have to get Please a second one. Please don't do one. that in business. Can I just dump it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> What are you doing? Like I don't want to hit a woman because like we're recording, <laughs> but don't I push. Get, can I get a picture of this? You, you can take you a picture. It's fine. Can we do this on the show? All right, all right. She's ready? taking on, a picture you need of the ash. She's taking a picture of my ash, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, yeah. This is awesome ash. Make sure you get Murray in it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we didn't tell her. So Murray is what I call my Murray's mustache. Murray's stash. Because he named the stash. I agree. You need to retire, Murray. Thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm waiting Sorry, Lindsay, for the right opportunity. I love you, but Murray needs to go away. Okay, so you want to be honest. Uh, the reason why I haven't shaved Murray, I haven't, we haven't broken up yet, is because I want to get to the point where I can like tweeze him, like just kind of do the little Christoph Waltz from Django. That's yeah, but that's a that's a lot. That's like you're looking at another three months. Oh, probably six. Dude, three months. This is with like your, a month. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I said three months. Three months. You're looking at. If I can only put on muscle the way I put on mustache hair, it's retarded. What I love you most could, about this show... You could, not taking my advice on that, too. I have to interject here. So what I love most about this show is that you and I are such ADD that we can jump like this from one topic to the other. I just spilled my heart out to you, and you care about your mustache and your ashes. Uh, I, 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 we're, getting, we're getting back to... I have a disability. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a disability. Uh, we all have look, a disability to some 100%, degree, hundred percent. Right? <laughs> everything you said, like no, I I'm literally... And I, I have this chair? Okay, sorry. It's not my chair. <laughs> but listen, I'm going to tell you this. I need to know, Farah, how in the world do people get in touch with you to become uh, students from you being their life coach? I want to get you appointed by the courts to be like a mandatory court liaison for these custody cases because we deal with so many people where it's obvious mm -hmm. that they're just riddled with childhood trauma and they're not mm -hmm. processing any of it. And, and, and so they God, just do these horrible things to each other. And it Dude, affects guys, the kids. And yes, what's happening is they're, they're traumatizing their kids. Exactly. Yes. And this is long-term damage, folks. Long and I damage. don't want that to happen to my kids. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in this situation. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to bring my stuff to the forefront. I'm just saying... 
I am in that position right now where the person thinks that I am 100% attacking them and I've never attacked them. I've, I, it took me a couple, I'm not going to lie, it took me a couple years to kind of get over mm. that what I wasn't doing wasn't working. Um, and and, and, it, and it sucked. And it really did. And yeah. I, I didn't lash out. I was kind of like, oh, well, please, you're being mean to me. And then I, 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 I reflected and I was like, you know what? That's me. I got to deal with those issues. Yeah. Um, the bottom line is, I would never want to see this person hurt, injured. I, I, I still have love for, even though the the trauma this person has put me through. I still love and respect this person, and they don't understand it. And I think that the person who who could benefit from you is people exactly like what he's saying. Mm-hmm. If if more people can get in touch with that and understand that we're both from not the not the women from mars and venus and all that stuff. <laughs> not that but the the sense of we, we are a little bit different and uh-huh. we attack not attack things but we we see things differently uh i think people can benefit from that so how can people reach out and say like please Farah, help me oh, to yeah. deal with this man yeah you know they can go to my website uh farahreina.com okay name. we'll put the link in the description link yes is there. so check Absolutely. it out for example and, and, yeah. and even if you don't think so you probably need some help yeah so just letting you know. everybody does like she, you were saying dude like look therapy works whether you want to believe it or not therapy does work the right kind of therapy works yeah yeah, yeah the right person like that working. approach that 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 that, that mm-hmm. um Sort of like a, a reductionist approach, where we're gonna we're gonna find out what started this whole pathology, this arc yes. of your of your of your growth. That's askew. We're gonna get to that root cause, and we're gonna address that, and then everything else kind of settles itself out. That's what works. This whole like, oh, why don't you just like write about your feelings? It's just masturbation. It's just total waste of time. It doesn't do anything. I had this girlfriend in college. She had a therapist, and I was like, has the therapist figured out that you have severe daddy issues? No, well, your therapist sucks because, like, I'm your friend and you've got massive daddy issues. Yeah, so finding a therapist, a counselor, or a life coach is very similar to dating. You're going to have to go to probably a se- have several sessions with several different people to find out which one speaks your language. Um, you know, my therapist in New Orleans was wonderful in terms of helping me get through suicidal tendencies and thoughts, but then I outgrew that. And then so there, there wasn't really a need for her anymore. So when I moved to Lafayette and uh, I had a couple of other sessions and then I found one. Who knew exactly? The first session, she said, you have anxious attachment disorder. I'm like, what the is, what? I don't even know what that is. She goes, read this book, come back next week, and we're going to go over it. And when I read the book, it was literally reading the inside of me. And I thought, why did what it What was take, the name of the book? Um, oh, anxious attachment. Um, it's um, permission to please. Permission to please. Um, but Got if it. you Google anxious attachment disorders, all the books will come up, and they're all very good. Um, you know, but but what's most heartbreaking for me is why did I wait 25 years to uncover my problem? Now I will say my when my when my mother some people go their whole life. Oh, they do. So you yeah. Know. So when when my mother died and, and my dad abandoned me, my grandmother immediately put me. Uh, I saw a child psychologist for years, um, which was helpful, right? Because I I could have gone in a different direction. Uh, mm-hmm. I could have been a juvenile delinquent. Um, you know, so. I just, you know, what I tell people, it, what I tell women is that if you're miserable, you need help, period. Um, and that's what I do. I help miserable women find happiness, essentially. Dude, I have so many friends of mine, like great guys, and they're in these marriages where you can tell the wife has some severe unprocessed trauma, and like it's making their marriage just mm-hmm. crap. It is. Because what women do is we project, we project our trauma on our partners, um, and, and vice versa, too, you know, um, and it's... I don't know. I, I, I love the work I do now. I left the corporate world to start my own coaching business, and, and I love it because, again, my goal is to empower people to have better relationships and to boost their self-esteem, to find their self-worth. And if they find their purpose in that, that's beautiful, but really it's so they can have the relationships that they deserve, which are nurturing, loving, caring, exciting relationships. Life is life can be exciting. Yes. Uh, I've only dated once in five years. Now all my girlfriends, they're chronic daters. They're all on these dating sites and they'll say, I can't believe you're not dating. Like you're missing out. And I'm like, actually, no, I'm getting to know myself. I'm dating myself because I feel yeah. good to a man right now until I know what I want. I will project my shit on him until I fix it and figure it out. And I and I tell my girlfriends, I'm like, you're all chronic daters because you have issues within yourself you've not worked out. You're looking for a man to either 
so fix that, that kind of hard truth those. doesn't uh, compromise your friendship with these women because no, like not at all. I they know, laugh they're like <laughs> whatever I'm oh, fine man. just like, like I used to be dude I feel like I'm yeah. in a Baptist church I'm like preach, preach. As, soon, <laughs> as soon as Lindsay decided to like get in tune with the issues and actually improve her life she lost all those toxic friends they just couldn't handle it she is so inspiring this is Alex's wife for those of you that don't know Lindsay and, and what I yeah, love right, is um, you know actually we lost that camera she it's out of film <laughs> Oh, do we? Do you need to reset it? Or are we no, 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 no. Okay. We're, 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 okay. We're, we're, well, hello. <laughs> You're looking at nobody. I know. Apparently. <laughs> You're looking at the wall. It's fine. What, what I love about your wife is, you know, she married you. She had a happy life. She had beautiful children, and then she gained a lot of weight. And then she woke up one day and said, "I don't want to live this life anymore." You know, she found her self worth, and and she she has taken Fancy. care of herself. She is a great mom. She has a passion for helping people going through divorce to help women really rebuild. And I mean. And, and she did that on her own. And that's what women and men have to do is you have to meditate and say, why am I miserable? What is it? You know, and if you say it's your husband, chances are it's yourself. If you start blaming other people for your misery, then those are your own internal issues you're projecting on others. Um, and, and what I'll tell you is, guys, life on the other side of childhood trauma is beautiful. If you just make the commitment to figure it out and work through it. I can say that. I can also say. It's getting bigger. No, sometimes it was my That's fault. That's what I was talking about. Like, it's I, so big. It's so distracting here. <laughs> as, much, as much as my wife needed to get over her trauma, like having an autistic husband, that didn't do any favors. <laughs> The whole like, hey, all those emotions you're struggling with, they're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, real, real but, but listen, most people need honesty to to grow. And if you don't have that honesty, you're never going to grow. But, you're never going to say like that was, I'm sorry, no, that sorry. It, that's the wrong thing for me to, to harbor my emotions through. I need to focus more on this because this is more reality. But what sorry. I love most about you and Lindsay is when you, when you were, I guess, diagnosed or told about your autism she wanted to learn the language she wanted to learn about that so she could love you better and i asked her i, I text her you know after this came out and i said well how are you doing with it and she goes i'm more in love with him now than i ever was and and i think that's because she understood your uniqueness finally and she taught herself how to embrace and love it some wives would have left you so a lot of them would yeah and i wouldn't have blamed them <laughs> And, and, and that and that's what I teach my clients too is relationships and people are not perfect there's no such thing as perfectionism but what you have to do is if you're committed and you do love the people in your life and they are different learn their uniqueness and appreciate that learn the language that they speak it's all about communication you know you you uh, you, 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 you voice some uncomfortable truths in your past and so I'm gonna I'm gonna follow suit you know when I got my diagnosis uh, it was a very hard adjustment because at first it was just this like my family always joked about autism yeah. because like we knew we were different but we had no idea just like how different we were right. and then when I got my diagnosis it was just like hey you know that little quirky thing that you joke about it actually is in your DNA and everything about you is influenced by this and it, as I discovered more about it it was very depressing and I was like man I'm a broken person because like I just can't do these things and I told her I was like look if you need to go no hard feelings like like please i was like i know i know the the effort that it's going to be required to deal with me because i know exactly what i can and can't do now and she was just like you're stupid you know i'm not leaving we're gonna do you understand out. and I'm, I'm i'm not trying to cut you off i just want you to realize this do you know that's what makes you and i hate to use this word because i'm gonna use it anyway it's what makes you beautiful dude mm. you don't see that Absolutely. and we do yeah, and as a communication coach, I yes. teach people embrace your uniqueness. You know, so many of us go into these networking events and we're terrified, right? Because we're afraid somebody will see our our oddity or think that. We're I just, love the oddity. Yeah, I love it, that's what and, intrigues me. I'm. So, that's, yeah. well, it's a lot that. easier now. Twenty years ago, it, 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 it was it was a little harsh. <laughs> and that's what harsh. that's what society and I hope that's what we're growing towards is that is that that's the the coolness the uniqueness we like people endure mm -hmm. that they just when they see change you're like oh i don't want to go that way but then you're like oh wait actually i kind of dig it and then they get used to it and they're like ah honestly it's better than you being fake yeah it is i mean sorry it's it's oh, i it's, agree it's beautiful i mean yeah yeah I, it is I, I love it and and alex and Lindsay are the perfect poster couple poster people for how differences in a relationship, drastic differences in a relationship can still work beautifully if you put in the effort. Well, she's done. Yeah. I'll, I'll drink to that. You know, Let's drink she, to that. Wrong to that. that. I am 100 million percent on that. Mm -hmm. Cheers. So I have some questions, Miss Farah. Sure. 
I'm still going to call you Farrah, even though you're like, don't say Farrah. People are going to call me Sarah and Tara. And I'm like, Whatever. You could call me Catherine. <laughs> no. 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 You're My TV name. <laughs> um, so do you have a plan of like, when you're going to say, I have sufficiently addressed the, the trauma so now I can like, re-enter the the dating scene and like look for a meaningful relationship yeah you know i i have to address the trauma every day it's it's like an alcoholic or a drug addict you know there's always that craving to go back right um and so my my whole outlook on dating right now is i'm not going to jump on a bunch of online sites and and crave love and attention because that is that is like a drug for me so my, and I, my friend's laughing at me about this. My whole outlook on dating and finding my next partner is I'm completely fine if I drop an apple in the produce department at Rouse's and this super cute hot guy hands it to me and says, here's your apple. And then like we make eyes and we fall in love. I'm fine with that. Like th- John's like, I'm going to Rouse's. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Like, so many things are running, racing. I'm uh, a very visual person, so like you're playing out a, like a, 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 a twilight moment. Like, where you're just yes. Like, Oh, okay. Stars. Yeah. I I have made a commitment to myself that I am not going to proactively go seek love. It is going to find me when the time is right. I'm trusting my God to send it to me. I'm trusting the universe and mm-hmm. my faith to send me my partner when the time is right. And when that happens, then I know that I'm in the right place to have a relationship. If I go out and just seek it because I'm lonely or I need comfort or I want companionship, um, that's dangerous for me, right? Okay. Going back so, to okay. I'm going back to the Baptist. Preach, sister, <laughs> preach. <laughs> and and I think I think a lot of people try too hard to find partners. I think if we let it happen organically, that's when we find the people we're supposed to be with. All right. So with that said. We're going to start asking you some uncomfortable questions. I'm really working hard not to drop this ash. This thing is magnificent. It's awesome. Is Anyone this more paying impressive attention than to this? I'm going to zoom Let's in on that actually. right now. That. Zo- please. That's, that's, that's half the half the cigar is ash now. It, and, and I know we're, I'm we're so I got you, I got you. focused on, 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 on Ferris' expertise and her story, oh. but that we're not really talking about the cigar much. Um, this is a killer cigar. It's, yeah, it's, I, the, it's the best. The I love it. It's so smooth. It's because it's, it's so long-winded. Like, you're not... It's, point, it's every minute. Two puffs point. a minute. Yes. I'm two long-winded. A Imagine that. It's not always a, a bad thing. That's all right. <laughs> I'm a talker. She's got good stamina. That's what she's saying. <laughs> this so, is the best cigar. I think I think it's better than my Cubans. It's very good. I, I, I don't know if I would say it's, it's, say it's, it's as good as a Cuban, you. but it's I, really good. It's, very, it's, it's definitely hitting the sport mm. here. And the I'm, retro hail is do. so great. It's very smooth. Uh, yeah. I, I'm picking up mostly leather. It's a lot of leather, but it's it's not a whole lot of spice. It's just, and it's, it's not really sweet. Right. It's very smooth, very very nice. And uh, it burns to a good ash. It, it makes a great ash. It does. Look at that thing. Mm, look at that. I'm gonna put my hands on it. It's such a good ash. So here are the questions. Sure, go ahead. All right. Hey, there's a lot in here, isn't it? It's okay. Well, I mean, you know, we've been hitting it hard. You just relit her. So give it give it a second. It'll it'll disperse. What is this stuff? It's called smoke, John. A <laughs> drink. <laughs> I don't care that I gave you the word. You're oh. gonna drink at least oh. once. Oh my god! I gave you my word. I don't care. Thank you. Oh, he's see. That's what he called. That's what he's like. He's giving it up. He's like, I'm just gonna out my word because I need I you to drink. I don't care because I got him to drink at least once. <laughs> I didn't even think about saying why is this a smoky in here. Oh, drink. Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, we're it's gonna like say a- smoke in every sentence right now. Just don't oh, drink happy. again. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna make it work for it. So, 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 because you are in in some capacity, like in 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 the uh, in the game, I want I want to ask some questions, okay? Because uh, we don't normally get access to this kind of insider baseball. So, dude, this I'm, is good. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you I'm gonna ask you some questions about things, and you're gonna tell me whether or not they're hot or they're not. Okay. 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 All right. Before we do that, though, a very important thing. You need to look over there and tell him to take a drink. Go ahead. <sighs> Go ahead. Take a drink. Nah, mm. uh, There's a okay. lot of smoke in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> take a drink. Go She's a ball. trooper. As uh, as the dad in the 1992 <laughs> comedy, so I married an expert, would say, I like this one, Charlie. She's quite a filly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Big beards. Ooh. Yeah, Sexy or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wait, what were my two answers? Hot or not? You could say yes or no. Okay. Yeah, basically hot or not, whatever. Hot. Hot. Okay. All right. What about used to be in a douche rock band? 
I don't know. <laughs> Dude, you're just like shooting me in the leg <laughs> I right don't know. now. I mean, I, uh, I wasn't I in a know. douche rock band. I was actually in a really good band. We made it to the top. We had Danny Hayes as our well, lawyer. Just, I think musicians are hot. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll settle for that. We'll yeah, settle for that. All right, that. All right, okay. fine. Are you trying to hook me up with him? No. 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 <laughs> no. no. You're good. I, no, I, I don't mean that like, oh, no. I'm just like, this is okay. What? The, I'm like the Joker, man. There's no He's method He's not in Ralph's at the Apple department, I know. I, know. I wish I would have brought an apple. I would have given it to me. Like, dude, <laughs> handle this apple. <laughs> okay, but here's something I really want to know. Jacked up trucks. No. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started. That's a whole oh, other show. Oh, man. I used to do comedy about jacked up trucks. Like oh, what's dude. the point? It was this so big. it was so risky, man. I was like, why well, don't you put a bumper sticker on your truck saying have a small dick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, why would you do that? It's to way yourself? cheaper. Usually, usually men or women who drive vehicles like that want attention. Yes, there's a problem there. Yeah, not a problem. I mean, that's their thing. Whatever. I like attention yes, too, but I have taste. Yeah, you know, taste. your car screams. I have taste. Just saying. Well, I mean, I try. You know. But See, I I'm, I'm too practical for big trucks like that. I'm, I'm like, I can't get in it, so why would I buy it? Or what if somebody throws a rock on it and scratches the paint? Then I'm pissed. So I'm, you know, I'm a little. Well, practical there's in, well not the big truck, but the, the ones that can actually pull things. They have a purpose. Mm-hmm. So I'll That's give true. you that. That's true. Yeah, I'll agree. give you that. But when you're putting those stupid rims on there with the tires, <laughs> and you're just like, dude, it's big, bro. You don't need it. Please stop. Okay. Okay. What about what about guys who hunt hunting? No, I'm not in. Okay, that's cool. See, I'm, 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 like, I never really got the whole hunting thing. I'm, yeah. I'm from here. This I, is sportsman's paradise, but like, yeah, hunting makes no sense to me. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, not but, my thing. It, 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 and to take their defense is like they're going out there and they're providing. And so a buddy of mine, I can do that's that too. What he does. Going to the store. <laughs> Go to Rouse's. Right? I go to Rouse's. Go to Rouse's. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to stick up for you guys. Maybe pick up an so apple listen, on the floor. So <laughs> when they go deer hunting or they go duck hunting, it's actually they're, they're providing for the year for their people okay so i guess i guess the issue that i've had with hunters is that they're all like man it's a sport and i'm like yeah dude it's not a sport if the opponent doesn't know they're playing mm. you know it's like just mm-hmm. it just doesn't make any sense to me and then and then and then there's the whole like they wear hey, camouflage but then but then but then they put a big fucking orange neon jacket on i'm like i don't think you get how camouflage works buddy you know well like what are they trying to do to the deer the deer's all like so many things i can say right now <laughs> dick cheney Shooting his buddy in the face. Come that, on, man. Yeah, but that's just because Dick Cheney's the devil. And I'll give you that one, too. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's like he shot his buddy because maybe he didn't see him at the moment because he didn't have a big orange jacket on. I don't know. On his face. Like, what are you doing with that orange jacket? Are you trying to trick the deer into thinking you're like a naturally occurring cone? <laughs> No, like it's like to say, like, please don't in, shoot like, me. Oh my God, is that tree under repair? Oh, I'm shot. That was well played. I had no idea. I think it's, it's like, I'm shot. <laughs> I think Sorry, it's like dude. the Hunger Games, though. It's like the deer sees the hunter with the orange vest on, and then it gives it the deer opportunity to run. And so let's see how good the sh- the, sh- the hunter shot is, right? While he's running, yeah. You know, and I guess that's sport. Could be. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But then, then, they're, then they're the guys, the hunters who like paint their trucks camouflage. <laughs> yeah. Those are the. That's. Those are like <laughs> off the deep end because it's just like, dude, your truck is camouflage? <laughs> like, are you expecting to drive in the woods and the deer be like, that is so not a truck? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm going to go walk up to it. <laughs> and then, then they act like there's all this prowess. Like, do you see the 10 point buck I put? It's like, dude. I've driven in Minnesota. You have to avoid like work about worry about not running them over. Exactly. <laughs> they. You ever heard a uh, shining deer? You ever heard about that? Yes. Of yeah. Course. Yeah. You know what that is? That's where you just drive up to a big field and shine a big ass light, and the deer come up to it because like, what is that? And then you kill them. A lot of oh, that takes skill. I that's, call that cheating. <laughs> yeah. That's like, well, that's the same thing as a salt lick. A salt lick, you're literally calling the deer like, oh, it tastes so good. Just stand there. Let me get your good beam on your heart. <laughs> you know. It, and come on. Literally, there's there's restaurants called the Salt Lick in Austin because that's what they do. They go to lick the salt and then they're like, "Oh, you got used to it. Oh, here's your heart." Wow. All right, so I'm gonna have to touch this up. It's please, starting, it's starting, please. It's starting, yes, it's starting. dude. I just don't want to because I don't want can, Gary. All right, John, can you edit in some really sad, lugubrious music yes, as I dump this ash? Because this done. is like this is like Elias, Willem Dafoe's character in Platoon dying at this point. It's just like, oh, oh, oh my. stay together. Oh my god. Oh my God! Right, pass me the torch, please. Yes, sir. Awesome. They, they, there you go. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm taking my band off. We're so getting up, Bill. Please, here. please explain to the audience. Uh, there's literally a competition 
in Cuba where the like how far you can get your ash to go and who won it? Alex. A woman. A woman. A Thank woman you. won the ash at the Habanos Festival in Havana, Cuba. Yes, they have a comp- They have the long ash competition yes. where everybody gets a cigar and it's the same length and they smoke it and they measure the ash to see before they break yep. it. See, and they, the way they smoke it in Cuba. Is like I was this. taught by our resident Habano expert, Mr. Andre yeah. Muto, that when you smoke a Habano, you have to hold it perfectly vertical. Like this. Because you don't want to drop the ash. That's, that's yep. considered a faux pas. Yep. And so you, you, it's, like, it's like a ninja snorkeling. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> ninja snorkeling. <laughs> that's how you smoke it. I do the Jamie thing. I, I, I've never learned how to do that. The, this, I don't yeah, know how to do that. Yeah, my dad used to do that all the time. Oh, that, that tends to happen when your balls drop. <laughs> My balls have dropped. You know, I can't do that though. I don't know how you guys do that. You can do it like my kids do, and they just go like, pop, 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 and they just make the sound with their hand. Yeah, <laughs> pop, pop, pop. I can't do it. It's like, oh, you're trying. Bless your heart. Bless him. <laughs> Bless his heart. Okay, all right. So we we've got through some of the um, some of the questions. One thing I do want to know in your in your memory, what is the best cigar you've ever smoked? This one. Oh, wow! Wow! We need to. We need to so <laughs> push you to the okay. Place. So no, I mean, uh, all of the all of the Cubans I've I've smoked, you know, are are probably my favorite. I mean, I really like the dark strong ones. Um, I've smoked one, I, and I don't recall the names I, because usually we're we drinking. We call those the BBCs. Okay, well, you the know, big you, black cigars. Usually, my friend and I are drinking way too much vodka by the time we get to the good ones. But I remember smoking a Cuban, and the aftertaste has stuck with me for three days. It was so strong. Wow, it was so good. You know what might get rid of that aftertaste? No, I liked it. It's a drink because you need to take one right now. Oh, oh, sorry, Mike. Oh, I know your word. Know. Oh, he thinks he knows the word. No, I do. I do. I know oh, the word. Know. He knows it. He knows it. All no, right. I do. Now I know. I do. I know. I yes. do it. Yes. Okay. All right. I analyze and trust me. I've been secretly like, like my matrix moment is happening. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, is that in all the little cigar groups that I'm in, no one ever talks about the Julius Caesar. I've never heard anyone talk about it, but they, it is actually fantastic. It is. I've seen guys go crazy for the Maximus, and of course you've got the Patron 1926 crowd, which is like, it's easy when you, 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 you talk about the cigar that's the highest, like the most expensive in the humidor, which is the 26. That's that's like a $30 cigar over here. That's, that's expensive, you know. This is in the teens. So why have you never tried this one then? I don't really have a good answer. I mean, I, I guess I, I would say Bailey's has a large humidor, and so there's a lot of stuff to try. I, I do try to pick something different. Every time I come here, you know, I ask Gary, you know, make a recommendation, and we he tells me things, and I try to, because I'm always wanting to expand them all, you know? Um, but I've never actually gotten around to trying this one, and now I feel like a bit of a schmuck because I haven't Why? tried it. Because it's... Man, it's really good. It's really good, and she and she got it on me. So, so you're gonna like, write an article about this for your magazine? Uh, I can. You should. I, I think can. you should. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Why not? Because this guy smokes the creme de la creme of cigars. But like, not everybody should... wants the creme. Maybe they. Dude, why can't I write about this one? Yeah. Why can't be such a buzzkill, John? Yeah, John. Jeez. Okay. Dang. Sorry. Yeah, smoke. My 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 point sorry. is, and and what I'm trying to be honest with is that the. Look, Alex smokes some phenomenal cigars that most people do the BS, kind of like, oh, it's a 97, blah, blah, blah. You should actually do some of the ones that are in your humidor right now because those are what I, actually, I look at them like, I look them up, I'm like, I don't think that's right. You know, I actually got into it with a guy today. He uh, he posted something about the CAO Flathead, which is uh, a very good score, but it's rated 95, and it's in the, the rating scale is up to 100, and anything over 90 is outstanding. That's the, yeah, that's the it, highest Yeah, anything tier. above 90 is And a, 90, a 95, man, you're an esteemed company. That's, that's yeah. really high up there. And he was like, I don't think it's a 95, and then one guy was like, it could be a 7, and I was like, you're an idiot, because... Like, <laughs> a 7? You said a 70. A 70. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like dude, it's, I, I was like, it's a solid <laughs> stick. I wouldn't put it anywhere near a 95, but I mean, it's, it, it's easily up, approaching 90. You know, because it's well made, it burns great, it's rolled great, uh, it's got good flavor. It's just not that high level. When, when you, when you know, like you say, when you, you, when you do a review best, on that, do a review on that, please. The flathead? Yes. Go I'd, re- I'd rather review this than the flathead. <laughs> really? Even something to where you're going to be honest and open with people, and then they're going to be like, "Oh, well, I'll take that into consideration." Well, I'm always honest. The, no, the, the next review is the Camacho Criollo. That's that's the next one I'm doing. Nice. 
because we got the photos for it. So if we if we pick out a, a different one, I don't care. If you want me to do this one, I'll just. If you want to do the flathead, I'll do the flathead. I don't care. He'll do it. Do the flathead and that. And and the the, the so jewelers. Who you think I am? Who Hefner? Well, I think the reason you would do this one is because it has been an interesting choice, and it was an unexpected. F- you know, yeah, I, I, an that's, unexpected and that's so why I will I'm leaning that way too. I will say Gary has yeah, I agree. mentioned the Julius Caesar to me on many occasions, and I just never pulled the trigger. So I I, I would be okay who, with who, doing who, who, Gary. Yeah. Oh, Gary. Oh, okay. Yeah, when we come here, he, he's always Sorry. like, "There's the Julius Caesar," and the reason why I've always passed it up. This is the real reason: is that. It's made by the same people, J.C. Newman, who do the Maximus, and the Maximus is the Maximus. Oh, so do, I always yeah, do yeah, the yeah. Maximus. Oh, actually, over this. I'm supposed to. So I'm, I, I'm supposed to do this on air. <laughs> oh, I didn't so, know this. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I have to do this. Uh, I was told to shoot you this on air. Um, this one. Oh my goodness! This is. This is your next review. This is a Partagas Maduro. 1845, I think you can get that at Total Wine. Let's start. So, you want me to review that? Yes, that is actually from our people out in our little gentleman scholar. They want to know how you feel about that. And okay. this is coming from our audience. They want to know how you feel about the cigar. Have you smoked that one yet? No, I haven't. Do you want to feature that on the show? Yes. Okay, yeah, we're going to do that first. Okay. Yes, and also... Our audience is actually, they sent me that picture. We get to, the point. You've said that over and over and over I'm again. Sorry. You, You're over communicating. Hey, Why okay. Fair, fair. It's from our audience. <laughs> yeah, it's for the from our audience. I'm trying I, to pump up I don't our know audience. If you know, I'm just giving you shit. I don't know if funny. you know this, but we have an audience. And they so refer to that. They actually reached that. out to me personally. That's awesome. And they were like, get Alex to write a review on this one. What's great is they reach out to him to ask me shit. Dude, you can just ask me. Well, you know, if, if only so there was a weird. way for you to communicate with us on our videos, exactly. maybe something that rhymed with moment. <laughs> so you I could just do it. But again, this is not this is not any fault to me. It's like I don't know whether I have that face or like, oh, you're more approachable or whatever. But they come through me to go. It's because my chin is perfectly centered. They're just like, we can't talk to yes, that guy. Yes, exactly. See, that's why I work. <laughs> oh, is it Mary? <laughs> It's Murray. it's Murray intimidating you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but they want you to do a review on that. Do you know what Murray is great for? The Russian guy. <laughs> I do this Russian guy. Do that. Stalin? <laughs> what do you mean Stalin? I <laughs> fucking kill you. No. We don't talk about Stalin. <laughs> oh, I did. That was so good. We have ways I have of my making moments. you talk. <laughs> anyway, so please. Okay. No, I, I, so you have so many things to review. I know, and that's and that's fine. That's Are like, you out again? But one thing, one thing I want to ask Farah is is now that now later. that you've like been in the lion's den, what we call Dork HQ. Um, <laughs> Here, what yeah, yeah. what are your thoughts of of like who should tune into our show? Because obviously it's a cigar show, but to me it's more than a cigar show because it's it's really about entertainment and and interesting people and. Being an, ambassador, being an ambassador one, for one how time. cool cigar culture is because this is the kind of stuff that happens every time we have a cigar meetup you know you never know where the conversation is going to go and it's always a good time so I guess that's I guess that's what I'm getting at yeah you know what I love most about shows like this is it's different um, I think especially with social media we're seeing the same stuff over and over and over again and so I just want to encourage anyone who wants to have a different experience with entertainment and a different experience with social media to watch the show. Uh, I think you bring a lot of value with your guests, so that's interesting because there are a lot of unique stories. But, um, you know, c- cigars is, is sort of an unknown subject for most people, I would say. And I like the fact that you can educate us about this, would you call it a hobby of yours? This new hobby? or Hobby, vice, addiction, whatever. Yeah, addiction. All the same. <laughs> But I, I love what they said earlier is that this, you know, bring the cigar and have the conversation. And Thank that's you. really what it's about. And, 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 when, and when my friend and I meet twice a year, we literally for three days in New Orleans, we wake up, go to breakfast and we sit at a place like this. We smoke cigars and we literally just talk. We just catch up. We talk about everything. And it's, it's beautiful. It's about bringing people together. It's connection. And, um, and you know, it's, you know what's, I love what's, it. What's funny is like I have I have this my little soft script prepared. We haven't really gotten anything on here because <laughs> the show is just gone. So we'd have to have like another have episode guests, that's what with happens. another cigar work because I really want to get into more cultural observations because your insights into trauma tell me a lot about the way you see the world and 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 then I, I'm really curious about your opinions on like the state of our culture 
because I, I see a lot of connection between the cultural problems that our nation faces and the way we have attitude towards men and women and, and their distinctions and what makes them different. And one of the big problems with like postmodernism is it, it, it tries to force men and women to be seen exactly the same. And you're telling me that one of the things you have to do in helping people is be like, look, women are, they're more suited to be nurturers and, and this way and men are more suited to be this way. So by appreciating the things that make them different, we're able to optimize what they can do and address their trauma and like make the best of all possible humans and so like there's so much that i want to get into that we're just not going to time yeah you know what i want to say just even as a human being and, and a member of this community and culture and society is i want us to learn to appreciate each other's differences and i want us to treat each other with kindness and understanding include to include those differences um we're all individuals there are no two people alike there are no two personalities alike and we're so quick to write somebody off or get defensive or combative or negative when somebody does not think the way we do, like the things we like. And we've just got to get over that. We've got to learn to just really appreciate each other and their uniqueness. And what I love most about my friends who are all very, or is it whom, who or whom are all very unique. <laughs> It's who. It's okay. who. Exactly. Uh, who are all very unique. I choose unique friends because they bring the color to my life. If I choose the people who think like me and act like me and talk like me and do things I do, I get bored. And exactly. life should be colorful. And I love different types of personalities. I surround myself with people like that because they teach me, I grow, I learn, and they bring so much life and color to me that just looking and loving people's differences just makes me a happier person well said well said I, I, I will share this I have a, a friend of mine on Facebook she is in Atlanta and she is the diametric opposite of me politically philosophically mm -hmm. uh, she also has a degree in philosophy which which is which is really interesting because we have a lot of the same training but the way we think couldn't be different couldn't be more different and I I, I like engaging with her because her way of understanding the world like everybody has categories you know like we we both studied kant um and, and and kant's big thesis was that you have these categories of perception and these categories like basically make your reality and most people sort of intuitively think that we're just like cameras mm -hmm. you perceive reality objectively and it is what it is but but the reality is our uh processing system forms our reality and so when you try to talk about what's in the real world you can't really know so he had it's going to get really really obscure in a second so I'm going, to, I'm going to not go there but basically her category is the way she perceives the world opposite of mine and so it's like she's very reasonable I'm very reasonable but we're starting from totally different sets of axioms mm -hmm. so the way we conclude totally different. and I love just understanding more about how she thinks so I just read it man it's fascinating yes. and I wish that more people would take the time to be like, okay, so you're saying things I don't agree with. Instead of me just saying you're a bad person, like it's fashionable today in mo modern mm -hmm. political discourse, let me try to figure out why you're coming to these conclusions that I, dis that I disagree with because maybe I'll gain a greater understanding of your way of seeing the world, which can then help me fine tune the way I see the world. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, we might find some common ground. That's exactly it. You know, it's all about the reticular activating system in your brain, which is the rose colored lens for which you see things. And once you understand how your reticular activating system works and you learn how to be open and change that to I guess embrace differences in other people. It it, it completely. You, you, you know who was the first person to use the phrase "rose-colored glasses"? Who you? Kant. Oh, Kant. Oh, there you go. And we didn't rehearse that. That's just a thing. That's just it. That it happened. is. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, it's fa like I I love neurology as well, and 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 a lot of the coaching work I do is based on mindset and how your brain operates because you know the way you see, the way you think, the way you feel, it changes the transmitters in your brain, which are your hormones. And, you know, we create our own anxiety a lot, our own depression sometimes, because we don't, you know, refine our reticular activating system. And, and so with clients, I try to teach them that whole concept. And they don't even know. They don't even know that it's the ruts in their brain is why they do and say the things they do. And we have to learn to understand that and be open and create new ways of thinking and new ways of feeling and new ways of accepting and understanding other people's emotions. It takes a lot of work. And I think the problem is people don't want to put in the work to accept differences. 
they want to be complacent and lazy and continue to just be like no naysayers they would rather and surround themselves with mirrors who just tell them what they want to hear yeah it, that's I exactly do a Jamie it. snap right now <laughs> you know it's so bad it's like she's hitting so many <laughs> notes where I'm just like that's exactly how I think yeah yeah and, and that's good because you're open to personal growth and development yes I'm just glad she taught me a new phrase because I'm going to text John next time he says something and I'm like dude your reticulator activating system is jacked <laughs> <laughs> I used to be like, that was cold. <laughs> you need to work on that, but buddy. I love you for it. You only make me grow. Yeah, absolutely. You only make me grow. You know, at the end of the day, we are what we think about. We are how we feel. And if we don't like how we're feeling and we don't like what we're thinking, then we have to learn how to change that. It's very simple. Yes. Yes. Can I get it? Yes. This is not. This is not rocket science. Well, it is, a, com- it is a complicated too. mindset matter, though, that they don't teach us in school. And they don't, our parents don't teach it to us, right? It takes us hitting rock bottom. It takes us to attempt suicide. It literally takes us to hit rock bottom in some form or fashion, whether it's an addiction or whatever the case is, for somebody to say, actually, your your brain is a little messed up, and I'm going to teach, teach you the right way to operate your brain, you know? Well, I wouldn't say messed up. It's, it's different. It is different. It's different, and you, you need to focus more on this area. Yeah, that's I mean, it. Well, my, I don't like to put people down. I like to well, make people grow. Let me clarify. When I say messed up, my brain was messed up whenever I am a thriving, high-performing career individual. My brain is I messed up when I'm driving around thinking about which bridge I can drive off into a lake and kill myself. The Lake Charles Bridge. I'm sorry. <laughs> is that rhetorical? That would be a good one. What bad. That's a good world one. is that? So, right now? But, but, but someone like me who has my dream job and all I think about is how to kill myself, my brain is messed up. There's something just not right about that. I can agree with that. You know? It's just not. It's dangerous. Okay, I would agree with that too. Happens. We managed to go the whole show. I, we didn't talk about your podcast though. Why don't you tell us about your podcast? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, uh, I have a podcast. It's called Live Worthy Life Lessons and it essentially talks about lessons in life and you know what you're facing and I give you tips on how to, to change it and help that as well. Um, it's interesting though. I have a lot of people asking about my first podcast, which was Bucket of Breakups and Makeups. Um, you know, I was on that show. You were on that show. Yeah, so so essentially I have, I have, I have two themes I that I work not. with. Yeah, breakup <laughs> recovery and then of course life lessons. So uh, yeah, I'm a podcaster. You can check it out. I'm on all the podcast platforms as well. If you want to be a guest, call me. We will, the, we will we will put, put a put link that, in yes, the description. You're so, so kind. Get you us are so good to me. Get us all... Well, you know, not everybody is abusive. We're okay. We're fine. (laughs) No, we are not. (laughs) I feel like, though, maybe my topics could turn off your viewers. I may have been a little too Oprah for everybody, so sorry. (laughs) But I I don't don't know. I don't know. Most cigar smokers are very traditional in their thinking, and and everything you're saying is is, is classical in in its nature, you know? (laughs) Alex, please take a drink. Oh! (laughs) What? What? I missed it. I'll drink with you. Did I, did I, did I, I didn't say your word. Yes, you did. Mm. You will oh, see on the, oh, <laughs> oh, you did, you oh. did. Yeah. It's fine, yeah. it's fine, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, I but probably has, got has anyone hand. said Farrah's word yet? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. What did oh, you yeah. pick, anti-disestablishmentarianism? Maybe. Oh my God, the most, that actually was the longest word in the English dictionary, <laughs> which is actually not the longest word now. Oh, right, we, right, yeah. We actually uh, ingested uh, Indian words which were way longer. Then there's Foxy and Oxy and Yeah, that one too. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> oh. I want to be a t shirt that just says, like, I say things. <laughs> I say things. Anti disassociation. I, I say things. <laughs> it should be the name of your show. <laughs> well, one of my comedy albums, when you get me back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it I Say Things. I Say Things. I Say Things. And I'm gonna just have, it's going to be a bunch of my ridiculous autism jokes and one liners. As because, long like, as you're smoking the Caesar when you do it. Oh, I will! I will Ron White that shit and have a cigar on stage. <laughs> this is now Hell my new yeah. six hundred one. I'm not gonna lie. This I think is my this new six hundred one. Yeah, which I, we I have yet to have on the to. show. But I talk about so much. <laughs> you people know. <laughs> you people know. Like so, I'm I'm at the bottom of my final third. It has not soured. It has not turned no, one bit. It, it is has still not. perfectly composed, very smooth. The leather is. I'm a big leather fan. I love the leather notes. Mm-hmm. It's all about that. Oh, that's great. It's, and no spice. Like the Tabernacle Broadleaf, which was the one I was going to do for today. We talked about it. Yep. That is a fantastic stick, but it's got a little spice. And by the end, it's it, it can be it can be heavy. This is like so much flavor, but it's not full. It's not going to be a, oppressive. It's not going to create a, a miasma in here or anything like that. No. And, and you know what? It doesn't leave off, which is crazy that I thought it was going to have a lot of. There's no pepper at the end. 
None. There's none. No pepper There's absolutely whatsoever. none. And I'm freaked out by it because I'm like, for me, uh, not a harsh cigar, but one that's more stout has that pepper finish. This does not. I'm so glad I was able to open you up to something different today. I know. She's, she's just going to like put this on her resume. Like, she's so like, I was a news go, anchor then. and I'm a life coach and I have these shows and I surprised the scholar guy with cigars. <laughs> I showed him what he had never heard of and I was like, yeah, pff, whatever. Take that. Boom. It's fine. <laughs> I'll take it. Check, check. It's check, fine. Check, check. So I do want to know, is it, uh, have we done anything to help you enjoy cigars more than twice a year? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just, just the education, the environment, exposing me to Bailey's has been beautiful because I would have never come here on my own, of course. Um, so I just appreciate the experience. And I'm all about experiences. And uh, the fact that I nailed, I think, probably a, a good favorite to, uh, that I could probably smoke every day if I wanted and be cool with. Yeah, I would I, totally I smoke that. this every day. I appreciate yeah. that. And you need to save that band. I will. I'll save it. Trunch. My ring. It's to commemorate. It's to commemorate this, this experience. You know, we do this every, like every Thursday. Really? Oh, wonderful! Okay. Every Thursday, we are at a place called the Cellar, and we have this same experience right here. That's wonderful. I could be like the little guy over there. I could sit in the corner and just watch you guys make fools of yourself. Oh, he's and playing his phone. We we are we are <laughs> that that's the thing is like we're at the age now because we're in our forties. We're like, hey, we're so cool making fools of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I've got a fuzzy caterpillar on my face. Do you think I have any pretension about making <laughs> fool of myself? <laughs> <laughs> it, it Literally, is, you do because you want to grow those butterfly wings. I, I have to. I have, yeah, that's right. It's got. It's got to metamorphosize. You know. <laughs> you have at least. Let's get there. two more months. I, two more I, months. You know, I have to tweeze this motherfucker. Because yeah, like, dude, I'm the, telling the you, the hairs are two more months, and you'll be able to push that. But you're gonna totally have to trim that. You're gonna go like. It's it's you know my mustache is like Heil Hitler. I'm yeah, like, that's what no, I was about to say. You don't want to do that in this climate. Speaking of, we watched a movie on Netflix uh, this week called Jojo Rabbit. Have you guys seen that? No. It's about this ten year old little boy in Nazi Germany towards the end of the war in like nineteen forties Germany, and he's got an imaginary friend who's Adolf Hitler, uh. and he's like an aspiring. The little kid's like an aspiring brown shirt, so he like wears this little Nazi uniform all the time. It, but it's why it's would so, you watch this? <laughs> it's well, it's a satire, and it completely lampoons Nazis. It makes them look utterly buffoonish. It's got a bunch well, of yeah, good. Scarlett Johansson's in it. Sam uh, Sam Rockwell's in it, and I love Sam Rockwell, dude. He's great. It, it's, he's it's amazing. A, it's a really cool one. And, and the guy who plays Hitler, like he mocks no, it it's, no, it's, it. but like definitely check it out it's really cool and like I was a, a Nazi historian when I was younger and so like watching it is like that is so not how it but okay it's fine you know but it's it, it's clearly uh, a commentary that's supposed to extend beyond Nazis because of the association between Nazis and like anybody who didn't vote for Biden so you know there's, there's all that <laughs> there's all that in there too let me throw that in there he but, says <laughs> yeah you know just saying <laughs> are we ready to rate this bad boy I am. All right. Well, don't, because Raina's going to kick us off. Yes, please. Come on, Miss Raina. I wouldn't even know how to rate it. Tell me, how do I, how do I rate a cigar? So, this well, is I'm great. No, you started, Okay, so, so 100 being the amazeballs, like you've never had anything like that in your life. I've never seen 100 rate. 97 is the highest I've ever yeah, seen a rate. Yeah, I, I would never go that high. Um, to uh, 90 being like, that's the creme de la creme. Like, you start at 90 being like, that's the that's the most prestigious. The elite. Yes. Sure. So and then eighty to ninety is like you're like you're hitting those notes. That's perfect. You're like you got the whole eighties is very good. Yes, seventies is good. And then no one rates below a seventy because this is like this yeah. is factory smokes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> garbage. So that there's your breakdown. So you look. You, the, so what you're gonna look for when you do a rating is the there's the visual presentation how does the wrapper look oh, I loved um, it. the 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 how is it veiny does it have what's called the teeth so the teeth are little pockets of oil mm -hmm. when you look at they're like little micro bumps and so if you look on your cigar you will see little bitty bumps on uh, those are called this. the teeth okay the bigger the bumps the more oil is stored in your wrapper yep um, then you have how veiny the wrapper is and then there's the sheen that's, okay uh, so that's all in the, the wrapper then you have the ash, okay, so the ash corresponds with how well it burns. Is it even? Does it keep a good ash? I think I demonstrated this. This, this thing is a ash. baller ash, yes. all right? Yep. So there's that. Then there's, um, does it burn evenly? There's the, how many, do you to touch it up? Uh, and then the last part is, is, is the flavor, which is arguably the, the most impressive part, but you talk about um, the, there's the opening of the cigar, the first third, the middle third, the last third. The flavor notes tend to evolve as you progress through the cigar, mm -hmm. so you're going to want to talk about a little bit how that goes. And, and those things all together go into your rating. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, I would give it a 90 because I like the consistency of the flavor. I like the texture. I like the size. I think it did burn easily. You know, the ash was good. So um, that's that's what I would give it. But you're the pro. I think that review was so good, you should take a drink. Oh, oh, oh I know what it is. I definitely, you said that thing four times. No, no, I, I definitely know what it is. He knows. He knows what it is. I definitely now. know what it is now. I definitely. I so know what it is. I'm going to say it off camera. Okay, it's fine. He doesn't want us to get it wrong again. All right, John, kick us so, so give us your review. So I, I'm going to stick heavily at a 93, and I'm going to tell you why. I was not in any way, shape, or form. When I smelt the flower notes, I was like, oh, this is not going to be for me. Because everyone knows, you guys know that I love a harsh cigar. This has that. Uh, the presentation was perfect. The, the Julius Caesar. I mean, look at this. I mean, I I'm gonna I'll put that in there. But look, look, this is a perfect wrapper. It's not like, hey, I'm a child trying to make a cigar, and the wrapper kind of goes that way. I'm sorry, Black Diamond, but do look, 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 Mr. Brown. I love your cigars. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; those are amazing. But. I can't, he's going, rapper, uh, he went there. He totally yeah, went there. But but your your rappers need to be revamped. So I'm sorry. Don't don't get mad at me uh, because I love your cigars. Uh, Nicaraguan pff, choice. Anyway, long story short, without going too long, this is a this is a ninety three ninety four somewhere in there. It hits everything. The leather, the orchestra, mm -hmm. the, the, the getting all the, 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 you know, like you're getting all the, you're getting the symphony of, hey, there's my horns. Oh, there's my strings. There's my, there's my. Broom. Okay. Yeah, all yeah. right. All right. Let me put you on the spot. Is it better than a Maximus? Mm, Ooh. Probably not. Ooh. <laughs> you just, I, li I like making him answer hard questions. Yeah. You just <laughs> nut shot at me. Um. It's 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 on the upswing. I'm going to say that it's on the upswing. It's it's got a lot of the same qualities of a Maxima, but it's not as strong. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, you just articulated it perfectly. I know. I was going to wait and see if you could do it before I said it for you. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> you're right. It's it's on the upswing. It's there. It's like it's about to hit the cusp, but it's not there. Like like I could see a Habano follow this. The Maximus you can't follow it with a cigar unless it's like hardcore Nicaraguan because it is so potent. It is so full body. It is so intense. Um, so I wouldn't say it's fair to compare because this this is like uh, uh, if we're talking about massages, this is like a really really great shiatsu, and the oh, Maximus is deep yeah. tissue. The I Maximus give you that. is I like, give you that. ow, what are you doing? And yeah. Like, uh, uh. Then I tell you, by the time I went and got a deep tissue, and it was this big jacked up dude. Who is something missing? wrong with that dude? That, like they probably sometimes yeah, give you the but best. But the thing ones. is, it's like it was like a ninety minute massage because Lindsay was like, "You're gonna relax," and so she scheduled. And I was like, "Did you know who you booked?" She's like, "No." I was like, "This guy fucking tortured me." <laughs> I get down there and like, there's always this quasi sexual element to a massage because like you're you're in your underwear under a towel and this other person is like touching you very familiar and so there's always this whole like. <laughs> quasi-sexual component of like, are they liking it? Are you liking it? This guy was making sure I knew he wasn't liking it. Because he was like taking his elbow and beating it. And I was like, I don't know if anyone's ever tapped out to a massage before, but like I was close. <laughs> At the end, he was like, yeah, you had a lot of sores. I was like, dude, I need to go to the hospital. Like, <laughs> you relaxed me so much, you need to relocate my shoulder because it is out. You <laughs> fucked me up. That was... <laughs> That was, I don't like you. that was the last massage I got. I was like, next time, we're like, okay, we're going to like get confirmation of who's going to do it. <laughs> Where's Ashley? Where's yeah. Ashley? I would, the chick that I would just like, doesn't do I would anything. like a twelve-year-old girl with muscular dystrophy. No yes. one is going to beat me up. Keep it real easy, you know. Yeah. But okay, so get back to the, to the Julius Caesar here. Uh, visually, I was more than impressed. I was blown away. The the sheen on the wrapper, like I cannot convey enough how important it is. That sheen is just that's where flavor is, man. As Guy Fieri would say, that's your first class ticket to Flavor Town. That is yes. that is it. Uh, the ash impeccable. Uh, I love the burn. I had to touch it up one time when it was starting to to asphyxiate because I had like seventeen inches of ash. Uh, the now let's get to the flavor notes. It started off real smooth, uh, non-acrid. It never turned. It, it, it was full leather, and it just got more robust as we went. I enjoyed it through and through. I mean, it was so good. I was like interrupting her while she was like bearing her soul about her her trauma. <laughs> he was, and so it's like, like if, if a cigar case, you'd be like, listen. Like, I felt like Kanye West. Like I'm gonna let you finish talking about your dead dad, but this shit's amazing. Like, that was. That was had the best album ever. <laughs> it was so I, I I'm blown. I'm gonna go 95. 
Oh, I'm gonna go 95 because 95 is yeah. a really esteemed company with like the Rocky Patel decade. Yep. The uh, and, and it's easily up there. Like this, this would be like competing with the Adrian Quattro or the My Father Le Bijou as far as just like exquisite gourmet, but still not break the bank. I mean, for the oh man, like, yeah. Triple A, all the way, baby. Absolutely. So I'm gonna say 95. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go high on this. Do one. we really have a price point on this at this point? Like what this thing costs? We could put it in the description, but I'm I'm okay. pretty sure. I'll, I'll put I'm it in pretty it. sure. I'll it's put it right here, bucks. right now. Oh, what it is? Be, okay, all right. Yeah, it, it seems like it may have been like 18 ish or 19. Or I'm, I'm, I'm like I feel it's very reasonable. very com- very confident it was under 20 bucks. I think it I, th- I think it's a better cigar than what it's priced. I think it's priced low mm. for the value of it, the quality of it. Actually, it was it was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was. So, do we have any final thoughts? I will say I have to pee. Everybody has Dude, trauma. So I we all have. Too. Oh my god, we have that in common. We're like a family. We're so Can we take a potty there. break or oh my god. just wrap it up? <laughs> it might be because we, we like, like went to the bathroom, you know, drank a lot. No. But everybody has trauma. Stop blaming other people. Look inside. Get a life coach if you need one. Call there it is. There, right There's. here. I'm gentle. So <laughs> I'm, we're not. I'm gentle. She is. She we're minds the stepchildren. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's not always about trauma. Look, if you have goals and you need some motivation, I got you. And hey, hey, cigars could be the catalyst. I think so. You know, I think they were today. I could have coaching sessions here with cigars. What? 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 Boom! Just hit you with the trust. I'd be like, you want to hear some horrible stories about my father? Let's go smoke a cigar. (laughs) Deal. I'm there. (laughs) All right, cheaper than so, Mr. Gentleman. If you want to close this out. With that being said, I'm John Welsh, and I'm the gentleman. And I'm Alex Stanford, and I'm the scholar, and this has been the lovely Fair Arena. Until next time, keep it smoky. Always. Always.